Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through the garment analysis assignment so that we can figure out exactly what's expected through this. You're going to look through the technical package lecture on your own. I'm not going to go through that entirely here because you might want to go slow, take your time with it, um, read the information, use it as a reference, uh, but you'll use that to end up measuring your garment, the same one that you just used for the technical drawing assignment that you did last week. And you're going to get POMs, points of measure, as shown in that lecture. So you'll use, again, the same garment that you just used, and you're just going to measure it in various points so that we could imagine sending this to a factory and having them replicating it, okay? So we're just taking this one step closer to making a real technical package. But right now, we're just kind of anal an analyzing a garment that already exists. If you have a tape measure, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need to use. If you don't have a tape measure, you could use a ruler and a piece of string, like a yarn, a ribbon, dental floss, whatever. Um, hold that on the garment and then hold it to the ruler to be able to get the measurement um, to figure out the garment measurement at various points. So, you know, you can do this regardless, um, but if you do have a tape measure, that's great. They're like a dollar or two dollars tops from anywhere, Walmart, fabric store, you can surely buy it online. But um, again, worst case, you can use anything and a ruler. And if you don't have a ruler, there's probably an app on your phone that you could download to do that. So you have the garment lying flat, just like you did when you were doing the technical drawing. So you lay that garment out flat and you measure the various points of measure that are applicable to your garment as explained in the lecture and I made videos um, and there's also should be tech pack examples that you can look at um, uploaded so again it's whatever is applicable to your garment if you have a skirt you're going to do the waist and the hip and the length um, but you won't obviously have any measurements that go along with the top right there won't be a bust measurement because it's just a skirt and if you have a top you probably won't have a hip measurement um, you'll just do the measurements that end up making sense for your garment so that's why it's not going to be the same for everybody and you're just going to have to make that call of what measurements are really important to your garment that you need and again there's tons of examples so you can see what is an option and then decide which ones you want to use so then you're going to start to put together your own very simple tech pack similar to the examples shown um, doesn't have as much information as the full ones but it'll start to become similar to that so there's examples that um, should be available and then you're going to put it all on one page and save it as a pdf Things that you definitely need to include are a photograph of your actual garment laying flat. This way we can compare it side by side to your flat drawing and really see the difference. You're going to also have your technical flat drawing of the garment. Um, you already did this, so you don't have to do it again. You don't need the arrows and measurements on top, and I'll show you in an example in a second that I've got. You don't need that, but if you want to put some in, you can. And then you're going to have your points of measure listed, so all the measurements that you take right next to it. I also want you to create a heading just to get in the habit of that since you'll have to do it for the final tech pack anyway. Um, it will have a style number. You can make something up. Um, some companies always do. They call it something so that they can obviously organize it. A style name, call your garment something, could just be skirt, but you could also give it a name. The brand, and this is just the brand on the label in your garment since this is a real garment that exists. The size, the date, your name, um, country of origin, fabrication, and care. All of this should be found somewhere on the tag, either on the label tag or usually on the side seam tag they would have like country of origin and fabrication and care information okay so i also want you to make a list of garment components these are the pattern pieces that would be used if you were actually sewing this so go back to your clothing construction thinking and your apparel design thinking when you were doing pattern making and imagine if you're looking at a top it has you know maybe a one bodice front and two bodice backs because there's a seam down the center of the back Think about the actual pattern pieces that you'd have to put together to sew this up. So again, you could send this off to a factory and they would know exactly which pattern pieces they need. Then I want you to give a brief description of the construction methods. How would it be sewn or assembled? So again, think about, you know, with maybe what part you would sew first, um, if there's any special thing you need to explain, like maybe you're turning something under, maybe you're sewing like a top stitch at, 
half an inch from the edge, something like that. So think back to clothing construction and really imagine you were going to sew this or more that you were going to tell someone else how to sew it. And then just give that brief description of those construction methods. Again, you can talk about where you're sewing it, like maybe at a half inch, where any top stitching is going, and the order that pattern pieces are assembled, things like that. Just do your best at this. Give it a try. Then I also want you to give your analysis of quality, and this is as it relates to the construction of the garment. Because again, imagine, say this is a sample you got from the factory, and now you're giving them your feedback on the quality of it. Maybe some of the seams are coming apart, maybe it's frayed at the edges, maybe the way that the seams are finished are of either you know, good quality, poor quality, whatever. Maybe you noticed it has something really nice, like a French seam. Remember when we did things like that um, in clothing construction? Or it has um, a hand-sewn seam. Maybe you can tell, something like that. So that's you know, seems really like a, a good quality. They took their extra time. But maybe it just has those surged seams, like you see in knitwear, just a quick finish on the edge of all those seaming. Maybe it has a lining, and, and that's an extra step of quality. Just do your best. Um, to analyze the quality based on what you can see in the way that it's constructed, you know, and, and you've been wearing it so you can see how it's been lasting over time. See what you can do. <laughs> you can build this document in Publisher or PowerPoint or even Word or, or some, you know, pr preferably probably an image-based program. Um, and then there's, again, examples you can look at. What I usually do is use Excel to create a spreadsheet for the measurements. And then I copy and paste that spreadsheet into another program in another document where I can assemble everything nicely. Excel is not easy to use in its entirety. Like it's hard to drop an image into Excel and move it around the way you like to. So I don't like to build everything in Excel, but I do like to use it to create little spreadsheets. So assemble however you like. Um, I'll show you some examples of what this is going to look like. So these are some garment analysis examples. I'm going to pull up like this pair of pants, for example, and see how I've got a real image of the real pair of pants. And then if you can, preferably crop out any of this background um, so that you only see the pants. And then I've got the technical flat drawing right next to it. So you can kind of compare how those two stack up side by side. Um, this was done digitally in Adobe Illustrator. So I created this flat digitally, um, but you could just as well do this, you know, by hand. And then here's these arrows and measurements I was talking about that are showing up on top. You don't need to do that, um, but later when we do our real tech packs, I will want to see maybe some of that. So you could always give it a try. Mostly it's just to show like where I got my measurements from, you know? So you see that's the knee, that's the hip, this, or this is, I should say the high thigh point, and then this is the hip, and then I'm obviously showing a circle to say, all the way around is where I got the waist measurement. It's just little details to make it a little more clear to be able to read um, what you've got going on. And this is what I'm talking about when I say I've got an Excel spreadsheet copied and pasted in. See this box here? I made this in Excel and I literally just copy and drop it in like an image to another program. And I know it's really small here, but you can pull up this document and look. But see, I've got a little heading where I've got all my information. And then I've got my measurements broken down. And it's whatever you need for your specific garment. Like I've got a lot of pocket measurements because these are like jean style. So they have a lot of different pockets. Um, I've also got um, a lot of the back information in here, even though I don't show like an image of the back in this particular one. Um, you can still include that info. Um, so you might not need that if it was like a simple pair of pants, for example. I've got a column that is the front measurement and a column that is the back measurement and a column that is the total measurement. That's definitely something that could be really helpful. In some cases, you wouldn't need it. Like, for example, like you can see where I've got inseam and outseam. There isn't a front and back. It's just the total. But in some cases, it's, it's really helpful. In a pair of pants, for example, the back 
is larger than the front because that's where your butt's going to go and it's going to take up more space so that the back leg across the thigh is going to be a larger measurement than the front leg across the thigh so that would be really helpful you know to be able to include that information so i definitely you know think about doing a front and a back and a total you should probably just go ahead and get in the habit of that now because it's usually how tech packed is done and then again if it doesn't apply in a certain case you can leave that blank you can only put in the total if you need to but it just helps and then when you you know have your front and your back separated you just add them together to get your total measurement okay um, so go through and kind of try to do your best at this again it's all we're building up and and we'll give you feedback on how you can make it better and then down here underneath i've got my garment components two front pant legs two back pant legs, one back yoke, et cetera, et cetera, all the extra little details that make like the zipper fly and all that. And then I've got um, construction uh, methods. So I'm saying that the waist seam is self-finished. It's tucked into the waistband. I'm giving examples of where you would do stitching, things like that. And then I've got a short analysis of quality. Okay, so that's what I want to see from you, something like that. So you can look through these other examples here for a top, a skirt, a dress, something like that. And then you should also somewhere have um, access to these, which is um, measuring for tech pack kind of tips. Um, it's just going to kind of show you where to take your measurements. Um, there's several, several pages in each, and it even gives you an example of all the different measurements somebody else, you know, ever came up with, like to measure for a dress, for example. So um, these came out of a textbook that I had, and again, it's showing you all of these different things with a front, back, and a total. Um, so you can literally just copy these and then literally delete the things that you don't need. Uh, for pants and skirt and tops, this is where, again, I even made a video of me measuring a pair of pants and how I would do it. And again, I'm showing you how, look, I'm holding a ribbon up to a ruler to use that as my tape measure if you don't have a tape measure on hand. But these are great because, again, they give you that list of what measurements you need. Like, again, for a pair of pants or shorts, for example, here's all the different measurements that you can do. And then it actually shows you with graphics where exactly you would take those measurements from. So you shouldn't have to be making this up. It's really, really clear. And these numbers on these graphics correlate to these numbers here. So it tells you, you know, for low hip is here. Uh, four, low hip, right? This is your actual hip, and that's your low hip. I'm pretty sure. Let me see what it called, number five. Number five. Oh, it was, oh, sorry, I made it. was low hip and high hip. <laughs> so four was high hip, and five was low hip. That makes more sense. So five is low hip, four is high hip. Anyway, so it should be really easy to see exactly where to take measurements and how you need to label them. So you're not making anything up, you're not winging it, you're just using the information that's here as a reference. So again, here's a shirt, there's a video to go along with it, shows you all the places to measure a shirt. And here's a skirt, a video to go along with it, all the places to measure a skirt. I did not make a video for dresses, but with dresses, it's very similar. It's like putting a skirt and a top together. So you can look back at both um, to get it. And then again, there's general measuring tips, which just show you, for example, um, general places to take those measurements from. So look at all the examples that are available for you and look at these and kind of options um, and ways that I've put it together and see if you can end up making your garment analysis, you know, that's going to look roughly like these ones. And then ideally, just like this, it's placed all onto one document, saved in a way that everybody can view it, which is why PDF is great, because that way you know it's going to come across sort of like an image, just the way that you want to show it. And then we'll give you feedback um, based on how closely it seems you're coming to hitting all the points. Things to really pay attention for is getting as many measurement details as you can, um, you know, definitely hitting on all the big ones. So just go through the list for whatever garment you're is um, and really try to get every measurement that seems like it pertains to what you're doing. And then um, another thing, you know, would be to look at um, 
maybe the accuracy of your drawing, um, you know, if it's, if anything is not seeming super accurate next to that actual garment, and then making sure you've actually got all the garment components. Um, but yeah, just see if you can do your best on all the other things, and hopefully it'll look good. All right, 